Okay, ready to put our first coat on and our applicator here. This is just a little piece of cotton rag. Um, you could use old t-shirts or go to Home Depot or Lowe's and they sell like a bag of rags. So just get one of those. Uh, you don't want to use a paper towel because the little lint pieces will come off, get stuck in the pores and be ugly. So you just get yourself a little square of this thing, fold it up a couple times, just kind of give like a nice, you know, a nice little applicator pad area. And uh, yeah, all we're gonna do is dip this in, wipe it on, do the whole piece, uh, and then you'll see as it soaks in, I'll take the camera down and get an angle in the light that uh, you'll see some spots that are still shiny where the, uh, the finish is sitting on top and then other parts are looking dull and that's where it's soaked all the way through the wood. And you're just gonna apply more on top of that. And you're just gonna keep applying it, keep applying it until it, it can't soak in and the wood is basically saturated. Uh, so then once the, the top is completely shiny, consistently so you know after 15 20 minutes it's still shiny from the last time you checked then you know you're good uh you got full penetration through the wood you wait an hour and you wipe it off and then the thing with the first coat is uh when you wipe it off now all that all that uh finish that's soaked into the wood now has a chance to get back out again now that you've removed that top layer so then you come back and you check every you know 15 minutes every half an hour and sometimes you'll see these little pinpricks of finish, and this is where it's coming back up out again, and then you have to wipe those off. And you try to do that. Uh, for the first coat, if you can, you apply it first thing in the morning so that way throughout the day you can just come through and just check and see if any of that finish is weeping back out of the top, and you just keep wiping it off. And so you've got a nice, even kind of satin sheen everywhere. Um, and after the first coat, that's the last time that'll happen. So then after that coat, now you wait 24 hours and start applying your second, your third, your fourth coat. And you don't have to keep coming back and checking. Uh, those coats will just wipe on, wait an hour, wipe off. All right. So I'm just going to dab a little bit there. And we'll get started. And you'll see this is this will be the best part because this wood will just pop immediately. And you can, I don't know if you can see in the reflection or in the, uh, in the camera, but some of it's like already looking dull as it soaks in. So if I dab this on here, you can see, I don't know if you can see that this is still nice and shiny, but over here it's already dull as it's soaked in. And this uh, ribbon sapelli, so this is basically quarter sawn, and you'll see some of the ribbons stay shiny, but in between them, it instantly soaks in. And it's just the way that the, the uh, pores in the wood are lined up, that the ribbons don't soak up the wood as fast as the uh, non-ribbon areas. <laughs> So I'll see, I'll, as I, after I put this first coat on, I'll take the camera down and get some raking light and you'll be able to see where it's soaked in and where it hasn't. Uh, for this particular board, only this, this surface and these edges will be visible. This is, uh, I'm wrapping a speaker with this. I'll put a link to some pictures in the description here. Um, the inside won't be visible, but it's generally considered good practice that you apply the finish all the way around or else you're going to have uneven access to uh, the humidity in the air and the wood might warp because one side is finished and one side isn't. Um, I've had some teachers say that that's sort of just an old wives tale and it doesn't really matter. And other ones say that that's absolutely essential that you must make sure that you coat all sides evenly. Uh, I'm just going to do this front side here and then bring the camera down, and then I'll do the back. Okay, get the camera. Okay, so you can see there. So you can see some spots here where it's still shiny, and then other parts where it's dull. That's really noticeable right here. And a good way you can usually tell is, if I had my door, I'm in the garage right now, if I had the garage door open, you'd really be able to see that raking light coming in and see some spots where it's shiny, some spots where it's not. So these spots where it's still dull, you just wanna come through here and just add more. And you'll see it'll stay shiny maybe for you know a few minutes and then that soaks in and it gets dull again. So you just wanna keep, you just basically wanna flood the top and you can't really put too much on. I mean, you can put as much as you want and any extra is just going to kind of float on top and it's going to get wiped off anyway. So 
don't be shy about putting on as much as possible. And again, this has to sit for an hour or more once you've applied it. So if you actually run out of finish because it's all soaking in, you have plenty of time to make more finish and just keep applying. So there's like a drop that I made, it's still nice and shiny, but everywhere around it, it's sort of already soaked in. And the fumes for this are pretty strong, so I probably actually am gonna open the garage here, just so I don't suffocate myself. <laughs> okay. So I put the camera back, and I'll, uh, that green change. So this is the best state here is when it's still nice and wet. The uh, chatoyance of this wood is amazing. And you'll see as you wipe it down, it's kind of it's kind of sad because it loses that that green pop at first when you wipe it off and then it dries. It looks kind of dull again. But then you put the next coat on and it comes back. Uh, and then when we're all done, you'll see I'll add a, a layer of um, feed and wax, Burt's feed and wax. And that sort of brings this the chatoyance kind of permanently to the wood after it's done. So another great thing about this finish is uh, you actually can open the garage and let the fresh air in where, you know, if you did something like a polyurethane and you open the door and any nibs of dust or even bugs come in, they're going to get stuck in your finish. Uh, here it doesn't really matter because you're going to wipe it down right, right off anyway. So anything that gets on there is going to get wiped off. Uh, and although, it, like I said, it matters, you know, that we're going to do both sides here, this side is never going to be seen, so it doesn't necessarily have to be super pretty. Um, so I don't mind as much, maybe, if I forget a spot and it gets uh, gets dry and doesn't get soaked in, because the top is really the, the side that's going to matter. It's going to look real nice. So I might flip it over a couple times just to freshen up the back and give it a nice another coat, but uh, I'm not super worried about it as much as I am the top anyway. These edges will definitely be visible, so I'm going to make sure those stay nice. And you might actually find that some wood you do just it, it never seems to stop soaking in um, and if taking the you know if you keep dipping the rag over and over again it's taking a long time you can actually just come in here and just sort of pour it give yourself a nice little pool to spray around because like I said you can't really have too much so you could pour it on here and just leave it and it would be fine because you're just gonna wipe it off again but Especially now with the uh, door open, I can really get that raking light and see where it's soaked in and it's dull. It should look like a nice wet pool. As I'm doing it, I can see it's soaking in really quick, so I just keep touching it up, touching it up, touching it up, and then eventually you'll touch it up and you won't see it soak in, and maybe five or ten minutes pass and it still hasn't soaked in. So that's a good point where you can kind of put your rag down, take a break, come in, check in in 15 minutes and see. If it has soaked in, then just touch it up and then do that again. Uh, but if it still hasn't soaked in, then that's a pretty good indication that it's saturated and it's not going to soak in anymore. So then you wait about an hour and we'll come back in and wipe it off. We'll do these other pieces here at the same time. And 
other great thing, you know, about the white thing on and off is that you can actually handle a piece like this and grab it by the finish and it doesn't matter. Um, if you're doing something like a polyurethane, you know, this is the death of the finish because you're just going to have fingerprints and it's going to be ruined. Um, you could never do this with that kind of finish, so. Another reason that this one is a winner. I know this is going to soak this in pretty well, so I'm just going to pour a bunch on here. back to prepping the wood you know I sand 220 uh, and then generally what I'll do is get a wet rag and run it over the wood which will raise the grain and then I'll go over the 220 again and then to get uh, any dust out of the pores I'll get a rag and cover it with uh, naphtha where you can use mineral spirits because that actually does not raise the grain it'll just help you uh, get the any dust and stuff out of the pores. So I'll run that over first, get all the get as much dust out as I can. You'll see it in the rag. It'll be in this case, you know, kind of orange colored. Uh, but it gives you a little preview of what the finish is gonna look like until it evaporates. Which is kind of nice. first board and see we've got some dull spots this works too to help keep it nice and wet just sort of pat it on don't spread out as much and it kind of keeps it pooled wherever you touch it so it gives a little extra to uh, a little extra headroom for silky in there Bring the camera down again and check that that raking angle. As you can see now that looks real nice. Stay nice and wet. Go to my other one here. Get a couple. So there's a spot there. It's a little dull. Kind of an area there. This edge. So I'll come back in touch those up and then uh, I'll start the video again when it's time to wipe off. I mentioned this earlier but uh, just to reiterate so everything looks nice and wet now and it's been wet for five minutes or so so now I'm gonna take a break come back in 15 minutes and just see if it's soaked in anymore. Uh, if not, then I'll wait the hour and then wipe it off. So check back in in 15 minutes. Okay, it's been 15 minutes or so. Let's take a look. This one's looking pretty good. There's a couple little dots right there you can see. And there. This board seems to have more dry spots kind of in the back there. Not too obviously dry, but drier. You can see kind of this zone. 
here. So I'm going to go through and touch those up. Touch those up and then uh, straight back another 15. Okay, stuff looks good. It's been about an hour. So we're going to wipe off. So we're going to get this out of the way. See, I judged that pretty good. Just a tiny little bit left. Uh, I'm going to need more rags. So this is where the bag of rags comes in handy. Um, these going to load up with extra finish pretty quickly. So, you know, get a couple big ones at least. I got a little stack back there. So, and you're just going to kind of ball this up. And maybe I'll start with this little piece first. And you're just going to wipe, wipe. And you should just get a pretty dull finish. Um, I don't know if you can see, but it's actually pulling out it's kind of pulling little fibers out of the out of the towel here and uh, when I was in that woodworking class he actually said that was a sign that the finish had cured to a good state that it was just tacky enough that it would pull kind of some threads out of your wiping cloth so that's a good sign you don't want to leave them there you kind of wipe those little dots off but And it's pretty important that you wipe this well. Uh, anything that's left when it finally dries after 24 hours, it'll turn into a little shiny spot that then becomes pretty hard to remove. We're gonna rub it down with uh, steel wool at one point, which will kind of help, but it'll never quite be perfect, I think. You'll kind of see those little shiny spots. So you wanna get really good at wiping down. And I'm kind of touching it here, so anywhere I touch it ends up leaving a shiny spot. So. I'll come back with these with uh, new gloves and probably two towels, one in each hand, so I'm not leaving any any prints anywhere. But that's okay, just for right this second. So you can see the rag kind of get some juicy spots. That wasn't too bad because it was a small piece, but kind of these big ones will load this up pretty quick. Here, and I'm just gonna keep kind of rotating the rag in my hand, kind of fluff it up a little bit, to give it a new. It has a pretty satin finish on it once you wipe it down. So, this rag's getting pretty loaded here. So, um, I'm gonna, I know I'm gonna come back with a fresh rag, so I'm just gonna keep using this one to wipe the majority off of this last piece. note about wood choice with this finish. Um, if you're doing a lighter wood like maple, uh, it will turn it extremely yellow. <laughs> so if you're okay with that, uh, feel free. But just know that if it's supposed to be white, it won't be after you apply this finish. It'll look like a pretty sickly-ish yellow. Um, but if you're using anything like cherry or Mahogany, sapelli, walnut, I mean, it makes a beautiful, beautiful color. But mahogany and lighter woods, not so much. Like I say, unless that's the kind of look you're going for. Okay, so that's the first wipe. So let me bring the camera down here. All right, so now if you get that raking light, you can see it's pretty pretty even now. I'm trying to see if I can find any pinpricks starting out. There's some here. 
as I mentioned, you know, as we take that top coat off, now all that wood that's soaked in has a chance on it to rise back up to the surface. So those are the ones we're going to look for every, you know, half an hour or so for the next few hours. That one looks pretty good. Maybe a couple little spots there. That guy's looking good. All right, so let me uh, put this back and I'll get a couple rags and do a nice final wipe down. All right, so now I've got my gloves off. I just want to make sure it's not gonna, the gloves aren't gonna leave any marks. I'm gonna try to find a, there's a nice clean rag there. Got a little bit of dust on it. Um, and I'm gonna get another one just to sort of kind of hold with my other hand. So, that's this one. So I'll kind of pick it up with the rag and then just do a nice wipe with the other one here. And you can kind of check in that light and just see if there's any shiny spots you left from the last wipe. There's a little pin prick there. That's showing up right there. And yeah, it's really important to get rid of those pin pricks, otherwise they'll dry shiny and they'll be tough to get rid of and you'll, you might see them in your final finish even after you buff it out with the steel wool. If you worked at it really hard, you might be able to get everything back down again, but it's much easier now just to make sure you wipe them away. Then you have to come back and get them later. Um, if both sides of your finish, or both sides of your wood are gonna be visible, then you wanna make sure that whatever you're putting it on like these uh, pyramids, you actually just wipe off the tips of these because they'll have a tiny little bit of finish and then they'll leave little pin pricks on the back. Of the piece. And I know that from experience because I didn't do that once. And I ended up with little pin pricks on the back there. Uh, this, in this piece, the backs will be hidden, so I'm not as worried about it. These boards are nice size, it's easy to pick them up and move them around and wipe down, but if this is on a big case piece that you can't do this to, you just have to kind of work around and get in all the nooks and crannies. You have to be careful any kind of joint where two boards meet, if they meet at the right angle, that corner will get, you got finish one to kind of stay in that corner and it's really hard to get in there, so you just want to make sure you get a really nice edge, maybe even use a card scraper or something, and put that inside of your rag so that you get a nice sharp edge that can get in there and get that finish out. Otherwise you'll have these little shiny lines in all of your corners where you couldn't quite get the finish out all the way. I'm just checking in the light here to see if there's any shiny spots I missed. And you just want to be careful if you load these rags up too much, then as I'm grabbing back and forth, I'll be leaving little shiny spots behind if the rag gets too loaded. So I'm just kind of double checking to make sure I keep rotating my rag. And it's very easy to see that once you're once it's down here and you're looking at looking at an angle and get that raking light, it's really easy to see those those high spots. So don't worry if you can't see them when they're up here. I can kind of see I'm leaving those little tufts out of the uh, rag, just making sure I'm picking those up as well. Um, another thing to consider with these, uh, like these painter's triangles, is depending on how heavy your board is, you know, if that back side is going to be visible. Uh, if your board is really heavy and the wood is not super dense, uh, the tips of those triangles may actually leave tiny little dents in your wood. Uh, so be careful of that too. Like again, this, this side is not going to be visible, so 
and the back side's not going to be, so I don't mind if it leaves a little. So I'm checking on that breaking light. It looks pretty good. Uh, so now I'll kind of leave this and I'll come back in 30 minutes. And we'll see if any of those pinpricks have started to pop up. So we'll come back and check. So it's been about a half an hour and came down to inspect any pricks and I don't see any. So I might got pretty I might have got pretty lucky with this board. So I don't quite trust it. I'll come back in another half hour or so and uh, double check. But if not, then that's it for the first coat. Now we'll wait uh, 24 hours and then apply a second coat.